Okay, good day everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, in this webinar by the Center for Information Integrity and the Internet or Incube. My name is Edson C. Tandok Jr. I am the director of the Incube, our research center here at the Wikimedia School of Communication and Information. And I'm very excited um, to introduce to you our research fellow at Incube, Dr. Sang Hao Go, who will be sharing with us results um, from our most recent survey. Uh, that examines uh, the, the phenomenon of online scams in Singapore. But before that, I want to share with you uh, what Incube is. Uh, those of you who are um, um, who are uh, learning about, uh, want to learn more about our center. Um, so Incube um, is a research center at, at NTU at Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. Um, we are uh, housed at the Weekend Weasel of Communication and Information, and we have committee members from across the university uh, helping us to do uh, interdisciplinary research. Our main focus, uh, uh, the research that we do, uh, fo mainly focuses on internet behavior um, in Singapore, and we have several research themes ranging from you know, the issue of fake news and misinformation. Uh, we do a lot of research on digital well-being. We're examining the use of emerging technologies, but also the use of uh, traditional media uh, and news sources. We're looking at um, online shopping behavior, consumer behavior online, as well as uh, perceptions um, of information integrity and quality. So in a, at our center, we engage a lot uh, with uh, policy uh, makers and industry. We uh, contribute uh, news commentaries. We also provide uh, briefings, um, talk about, share about our research findings with our, our different stakeholders. But we also publish a lot of academic articles um, and we also engage the public through uh, webinars uh, like that, the one that we're having today, but also uh, by contributing to public discourse. So we've been running um, several webinars, uh, and, and all our webinars are uploaded on YouTube. And uh, in this webinar, we are focusing on the very important topic of uh, online scams. And so I would like to um, uh, uh, share um, our findings uh, through a presentation by a research fellow, uh, Dr. Tsang Hao Go, who will talk about the survey as well as the uh, findings. Dr. Go? Right. Thank you so much, uh, Edson, for the introduction. So, um, right. So, today I'm going to present to you uh, the results uh, from a national survey that is uh, conducted in Singapore. So, so, basically, this survey was conducted in um, July 2022. And this survey is actually a part of a longitudinal survey conducted at Incube. And um, this particular survey is actually wave four, right? So we have um, conducted previous wave, uh, wave one to wave three, right? And in this survey, we have collected 992 respondents, uh, uh, responses, right? And uh, the recruitment of these uh, participants is actually um, engaged, uh, as in now we engage a private uh, survey company to, to help us uh, recruit the participants. And the participation is actually restricted to um, Singapore citizens, PRs, and foreigners that are residing in Singapore at the time of the survey. And also, this um, uh, to participate in this survey, um, the respondents need to be um, age 21 years old and above. Allow me to introduce to you the um, demographics that are in this um, survey sample. Right? So we have roughly um, an equal um, percentage of male and female respondents. And uh, most of the uh, respondents are actually Chinese. And most of them are ac actually um, Singapore citizens. And most of them actually have a bachelor degree. The findings that we are going to present today is, uh, is very preliminary, right? So basically, we are actually looking at the types of scams that um, respondents uh, actually encounter. And in our survey, we actually found that uh, most of the respondents actually encounter scams through phone calls and emails. Right, phone calls and emails, uh, and of course, um, uh, some other, uh, through some other means like uh, SMS, uh, internet messaging apps, social media platforms. Uh, we also measure um, respondents' optimism towards scams. That is, um, how optimistic they are towards uh, avoiding a scam, and we found that actually the respondents um they adopt a cautious attitude towards scam, right? Meaning that they are not very optimistic and they are also not very pessimistic, right? So, so, so they are somewhere in the middle, right? As you can see from the yellow bars here, right? We have very high percentage of people who are actually very neutral towards uh, scam optimism. We also looked at um, the 
the frequency of uh, these respondent uh, encountering scams, right? So, so overall, we found that um, among uh, among those people who encountered scams, uh, they are actually for forty point two percent of uh, the respondents uh, indicated that they have actually lost money um, to a scam, right? And um, yes, of course, uh, uh, and also um, uh, some of the respondents they do not uh, uh, as in uh, most of them do not heard of uh, friends uh, and uh, and families uh, who who actually lost money to a scam. We want to look at who are these people, right? Who are these people who actually lost money to a scam, right? So these people are actually male, mostly are male, right? And mostly, most of them are actually married. And um, they have a full-time job. Most of them have a full-time job. So 88.6% 80, of them have a full-time job. And most of them are actually quite highly educated, right? As, uh, as you can see, there are actually 43.9% of them um, who, um, who actually have a bachelor's degree. So, so uh, looking at this set of results, uh, as you can see that uh, apart from the gender proportions, uh, you realize that by just looking at these um, demographics here, uh, it is it is it is actually expected that um, these people are actually uh, very they should be very vigilant towards scams, right? I mean, for, for example, for married people, they have uh, high stakes; they need to uh, support their families, right? And and whereas for people who who, who have um, full time jobs, and and people who uh, who actually have uh, bachelor degrees, they are they are actually well educated. They should be well informed and 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 uh, in other words it is it is it is it should be uh there should be very low chances of these people um getting scammed right but uh we, we actually see otherwise right so this is a breakdown of um the amount of money that is actually lost uh, uh due to scams right as you can see uh most of them actually lost money uh, i mean lost uh, less than uh, one thousand dollars Right, so there's uh, there's actually sixty eight point five percent of them who actually lost uh, less than one thousand dollars. Right, but on average, um, these people actually lost about uh, nine thousand over dollars um, due to scams. We also uh, do a deeper study on what do these people do after losing money. Right, so when you lose money, uh, what is, what is the first thing that you do? I mean, you know, what are the things that you want to do? Right. And we found that most 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 of the people actually seek to mitigate this issue by um, alerting the uh, relevant companies, for example, the bank, right? Uh, you need to stop the payment and all this, right? And also, most of them actually um, inform their uh, close uh, close family members about this, right? Uh, and of course, uh, report it to the police, right? But uh, there's only a few of them actually share their experience uh, with others, right? So so in other words, uh, they don't really uh, promote uh, about 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 uh, uh, about their mishaps to to their friends to their uh, to their social circle, right? What happens, um, right? So this uh, this question uh, 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 is actually asked uh, to to all of the respondents, as in uh, what do they um, think about um, getting scammed, right? So so let's say uh, if they have been scammed, right? So. So we ask them uh, whether if they they themselves are to blame for the scam or others are are to blame, right? So we found that most respondents actually believe that they are uh, not entirely to blame if they got scammed, right? That means uh, yes, although they do blame themselves, but they also blame the others. They also blame uh, the society, right? So so uh, I think there is more uh, opportunities to actually look deeper into this. Uh, set of data here, right? And we also did a comparison uh, between those people who have encountered scam versus those people who have not encountered scams before. We want to know what are these, uh, what are the profiles of these people are like, right? So uh, as you can see, uh, those people who have encountered scams before, uh, they, have, they have slightly higher scam optimism than those people who have not en uh, encountered scams before. And they are actually younger. Um, than those people who have not encountered scams before. And in terms of their self-efficacy in um, detecting fake news, these people who have encountered scams before, they actually uh, declare that, uh, 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 indicate that they, they, they can uh, detect fake news uh, effectively. Right? 
And in terms of their monthly household income, those people who have encountered scams before, um, their, 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 their monthly household income is uh, slightly more than those who have not encountered scams. So um, again, we also compare the profiles of those people who lost and did not lose money due to the scams, right? So for those people who lost money due to scams, they are less optimistic and they are of higher age than those people who did not lose any money um, uh, due to scams, right? And they have lower self-efficacy in detecting fake news um, than those people who did not lose money to the scams. Uh, and likewise for uh, monthly household income.